you're like me and you heat your home with firewood, one of the worst parts of getting firewood is dealing with the limbs. One thing that is true about limbs is there's more beets to use, there's more heat in the limbs than there is in the trunk. They're denser. If you look at the growth rings, growth rings they're much tighter together. So it is a good resource and it is um, uh, something that is worth the time to collect. The problem is, is, is cutting them. Um, they're on the ground typically and put them in piles like this and you're, you're stepping over the pile and, and it's unsafe and it's just difficult, it's back-breaking work. And then you run the risk of putting your bar uh, in the dirt and hitting a rock and then you've got the next 30 minutes uh, uh, sharpening your saw. So I'm going to show you um, a, a little thing that I built that will help um, change the way you cut firewood and make your life a lot easier. So I've decided to mount my firewood holder on the back of my wood splitter. I could hook this up to the quad or the truck, I'll have this usually with me when I'm splitting firewood. But also I'm going to make sure that the system that I'm going to put together is going to be really modular. So utilizing some square stock, it's going to have kind of the, the trailer, trailer hitch style. Where I can mount, uh, take another one of these and I could mount it on the side of a tractor bucket. You know, perhaps it could sit over the side and as you cut it falls in the bucket. Or a post in the ground if you had a designated kind of a woodshed area. But uh, for me, we're going to get started with the wood splitter. So let's start putting it together and I'll kind of show you what I came up with. So the back of the wood splitter makes an ideal mounting spot uh, for this uh, firewood holder because it's just so robust. i got this heavy I-beam here and uh, these support plates are just ideal. So I kind of got a little head start on you guys here, but uh, what I did is I drilled these two holes and I've got this channel, or not channel, but the square stock. It's uh, about inch and three quarters or so. And I just let Matt found it so it fits perfectly. So the, the mount itself will slide inside of that so it'll be, become more clear to you as we go so let's go ahead and put this on so what I've got here is is we'll put a bolt in the bottom and I've got these here for the cross pins so I can slide in the rack and then the pin will go in here and the pin is actually what prevents it from rotating so let's go ahead and get it uh, mounted up and you'll see so one thing I've learned from experience is uh, no matter how hard you try, it's always hard to get something uh, plumb. So on this bottom hole right here, I just took a little die grinder, you could use a file, and just kind of oval that out a bit. And what that does is that just gives you, once that pin's mounted in here, it just gives you just a tad bit of uh, adjustment in there. And it's always nice to have a little bit of adjustment to make things uh, nice and plumb. So now with the receiver secured, you can see that we have the, the first we have the stand and kind of get an idea how it works. So we can usually put the trailer pin in this way or whichever way we want. It's kind of designed for this way and the pin will prevent this arm from, uh, from twisting on us. Then we can put the cotter key in and then we have a, a good modular stand here that we can take with us and put in other places add it, remove it, uh, whatever. But a simple, elegant design that'll work really well. So right now I'm working on the crossbar. We're gonna, this is going to be the lower section that uh, bites the branch. And we've got to have some spikes in there, something to grip it. There's probably a thousand different ways to do this, but I'll show you the, what, the, the way that I came up with. So here's a completed lower brace. It's uh, the spikes are on there, crude but should be effective. So I just welded those in there in the bottom, ground them down, and I'm overall I'm pretty happy with it. So the top section, the swing arm, the spikes will come in here and then come in between, kind of like teeth. So I think now it's time to tack this on to the main support and then uh, get started on the upper section. All right, so I got all my pieces cut, and just to kind of give you a quick overview of how this is going to work, we've got our bottom section there with our spikes, 
and then these two pieces here will be welded on like this and like this, right? So we use these bolts as hinge pins and then this is going to, we'll get drill holes in here will be one assembly and this is going to pivot like this. This will hook to another piece just like the one we had with the teeth there. So it's all confusing right now but I'll start putting it together here and it'll all come clear soon enough. So that's pretty much it, and it works really good. I One thing I did deviate from was I decided not to put any teeth on here. I just didn't know if they were necessary or not, and I, after using it, I don't think that they are. All it's going to do is, is cause something to hang up when you're trying to push the branch through. So the teeth on the on the, the, the barn door, the swinging portion, seem to be enough. So uh, this is going to be really nice. So let's go try it out and see how it works. So now that I've got a chance to use this, it really exceeded my expectations. It really works great. It's a very uh, modular, as the way we put it in with the trailer hitch. You can turn it, we can load from either side, any direction. We can remove it, we can put it on a different piece of equipment. It just uh, has a lot of p potentials. The way this arm is designed, it's progressive, so it will accommodate lots of different sizes of limbs, so you don't have to constantly adjust it. But if you do need to adjust it, if you need to work on some big things, I've got all these, these extra graduated holes here so I can move this up and down to accommodate larger things. I'm probably not going to because if it's that big I'm going to cut it on the ground. It's just too heavy to pick up, but you do have that option. So this is just something that um, I've got about $60 into and that was mainly the price of the steel. A 12 foot of inch and a half and a half a day and, and a pretty simple project and something that will really make cutting wood uh, a lot more enjoyable. So I'm looking forward to getting after all those piles of limbs I've been putting off and this is going to make things a lot nicer. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.